So now that we know how to collect and organise references, it's time to look at how we're going to get our references out of EndNote and put them in our Word documents. So here's a sample Word document. And when EndNote was installed on this computer, a plugin for Word was also installed. And you can see it up here, it says EndNote X9 on the Word ribbon. This plugin contains all the tools that you need to work with EndNote in your Word documents. And the first thing I need to do is make sure that the style is correct. So I can see style here, and it says APA 7th, which is correct. If that style doesn't match the one that you're using in EndNote, then you just click the drop-down menu and choose from the options here, or choose select another style, and choose from the big list of options. Just make sure that the style matches the one you're using in EndNote, and uh, we're using APA 7th here. OK, I'm going to insert some citations. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. I'll show you both of them and you can choose which one suits you best. First I just need to make sure that I've got EndNote open in the background. And then I can start inserting. So I'm going to put my cursor at the end of a sentence. This is where I want to insert my in-text reference. I'll add a space. And then I'll try the first method. So if I go up here to the uh, EndNote X9 part of the word ribbon and then click Insert Citation. I can then search for the reference I want in my EndNote library. So I can use the author's last name or a word from the title and then click Find. And then the reference that I want, I just make sure that's selected and click Insert. And you can see two things have happened here. First of all, the in-text reference has been inserted where I have my cursor. And then also, EndNote is building the reference list as well at the bottom of my document. So because this is the, actually the end of my two-paragraph document, then the reference list entry is just going right at the bottom there. So that looks good. I can try now the second way and show you the second way to insert a reference. So in this case, you again put your cursor where you want the reference to go, add a space, and then instead of choosing Insert Citation, I'm going to, just right next to it, click Go to EndNote. And that will pull up my EndNote library, which I have open here, and then I can easily choose the reference I want, rather than having to search for it. So this is a good option if you can't remember the name of the author or of the title of the reference you want to insert. So let's say I want to insert this one here. I can then click the quotation mark button in EndNote, which is the insert citation button. Looks like a pair of quote marks. So I select the one I want, click the button, and here it is here. And also the reference list entry has been added to my reference list. Now I can add a couple at a time. Um, and when I do this, it's quite easy to use the second method, the go to EndNote method. So I'm going to put my cursor where I want it, add a space, and choose go to EndNote. And then I'm going to choose maybe a couple of references. Say I want two references here. So I'm going to choose one, and then I'm going to control click, or command click on a Mac, to choose another reference, and then use the quotation marks, insert citation button again. And that will enter two references with a semicolon between them, which is correct APA style. And you'll see that they're both there in the reference list. Now let's look at what else you might want to do with your in-text references. So one thing you might want to do is add a page number. And the way to do that is not to just click inside this reference and start typing the page number in. Now you'll notice that when I clicked on this in-text reference, it turned grey. And that lets you know that there are hidden EndNote codes in the Word document that help uh, Word connect the document with your EndNote library. Um, and you can, you can cause some problems for yourself if you start typing in the middle of your references. You could end up with changes that you make which are then not there when you open your document later, or worst case scenario, you could start corrupting your document. So it's better not to click inside of your references that are still linked to your eNote library and just start typing. Instead, what you need to do is use the tools that are available in the eNote X9 part of the Word ribbon.
So in order to add a page number, I'm going to just click on the reference first to select it. And then I'm going to go up and use this very useful tool, Edit and Manage Citations. So when I click on that, I get a list of all the citations that are in my document at the moment. And the one that I selected is highlighted. And now I've got various options for how I want to change this in text reference. And what I'll show you now is the pages field here. So I can just add the page number 34, just like that. I don't have to type P dot or anything like that. EndNote will do that for me. So I just put in the number and click OK. And you'll see that the page number has been added. So that's a nice easy way to add a page number. Something else you might want to do is actually just remove a reference, so delete it. Um, and again, don't do that by selecting and cutting or using the delete or backspace key. Um, in order not to cause problems with your document, you want to use these tools up here in the ribbon. So I've clicked on my reference, which I wish to delete, and I've gone up to Edit and Manage Citations again. When I click on that, the reference that I selected is highlighted. This is the one I want to remove. So over here there is a little drop down menu called Edit Reference. And if I click on that, I can choose Remove Citation. So that's the best way to remove a citation from your document. I'll just click OK. And you'll see that it's now disappeared. And because that was the only time that that reference was cited in my document, it's also gone from my reference list. So that's great. I do need to just remove this extra space now. There we go. Another thing you might want to do is actually change the way that the reference is formatted. So for instance, here I have um, the name of an author or a couple of authors and a quote. And I would like to have the reference in here from EndNote, but I just want the year in brackets. I've already written the name of the authors. So one of the ways to do this is first just insert the reference as normal. So I'm going to choose uh, to go to EndNote. I'm going to choose the reference that I want and click on the quote marks insert citation button so that I have Higgins et al there and I'll just add a space. But I don't want this repeat, this repetition of the name of the author. So I've got a couple of options. I can either click on this reference to select it, choose Edit and Manage Citations, and then change the formatting from default to um, another display option. So I could exclude author here, or I could display as author year in brackets and just delete the author's name that I'd written in my sentence. But seeing as I've already written the, the author's name in my sentence, I think I'll, I'll just exclude the author from this citation. So I click on that option, choose OK, and now I've just got 2020, which is great. Hmm, but what about the page number? I want to add the page number as well. So I can do that either here after the 2020 by simply editing that citation and adding in the page number like this. Or if I prefer, I could put this at the end of the quotation there. So that's another option. I'll show you what that would look like. I could add the citation to Higgins right here after the quotation. And then when I select it and choose Edit and Manage Citations, I'm going to exclude author and year. So I don't want either of these, but I do want the page number. And I can remove the page number from this part of the citation now. So Edit and Manage Citations and delete the page number. So now that looks good. Another thing you might want to do is change the formatting of your reference list. So to do this on a Windows machine, you go up to the bibliography part of the ribbon and then click on this little arrow here. It's called configure bibliography. 
If I just click on that, then I get a window with some layout options. So I'll click on the Layout tab, and here I can add a title. So I could add References, and I can also change the font and the size of my reference list entries. I'll just change them to 10 point, and there are some line spacing options here as well. So I can click OK, and then you can see how that's changed the way it's formatted. There's more information about using Word with EndNote in the EndNote guide under Use EndNote with Word. If you take a look at the Format and Unformat Citations section, you'll just see an example of what citations look like when they're unformatted, which is this one here with curly braces and a hashtag. If you ever find that your citations become unformatted, so you open your document and they, are, they look like this, and your reference list seems to have disappeared, then you can easily um, use the Update Citations button to take it back to normal. But there are some reasons when you might want to use unformatted citations, and we discuss them here. There's another option to convert to plain text. So the Word document that I was showing you was, of course, still linked to EndNote. But you can convert a document to a plain text, ordinary Word document, and sometimes that will be necessary if you are, say, um, sending an article off to be published by a journal. So there's lots more information there on the EndNote guide for working with Word.